It's getting near the end of the summer season and the on-road racing is going to start soon so I wanted to see how does the chassis uh, work out for regulation track width and first of all here is the Ford GT chassis it had no damage from the speed run the only thing is that the tires are getting pretty bald now so here's the stock tires this is the rears I've just taken them off because in an effort to see how this chassis would work out for spec racing specifically i was interested in running it in the us gt class i ordered these gravity rc us gt regulation wheels and tires from my local hobby store and this is the tread tire and width and style of rim that you have to run but its offset isn't very much so i was trying to figure out well what is the track width on the new 4 gt using the stock wheel nuts and with these rotors it had a 180 millimeter track width and i had just ordered these stampede hexes because they are wider 3654 and i only gained two millimeters so these ones are around 82 83 millimeters still not enough i was trying to get to a 190 millimeter track width so this is the stampede hex and you can see that it's quite a bit wider, but really it only gains you three millimeters over the original. So not, it looks quite a bit wider because it doesn't have the router on it, but really I'm only gaining two or three millimeters. It's still not enough. So I might give up on the idea of the USGT spec racing for this. If I did want to run it in USGT, I have to change all my electronics anyway. So I might just leave this car as speed run machine and a drift machine just for fun. Because I do have my old Fortech, Fortech which is right here. My original Fortech. And if I put the rims on that, it's a proper 190 millimeter width. Um, I also have this sneak peek. That is going to be my on-road racing car, which I'll show you more about in a future video. So please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Get notified for when I upload new videos. Something weird and unique about the 4 GT is that the hexes are keyed so that it shows you what they are right rear. I just accidentally put this one on the rear left. It fits fine. I see no reason why they're indicated as what side they're from. If anyone knows, leave a comment below because I don't, I don't get it. Other than the rotation of the cross drilled in the rotors, and really, that's just cosmetic. It makes no difference. So I think maybe that's why, but that seems really odd. And then the calipers just uh, screw on with one hex. They just go on like that on the front and uh, screw into place. All right, I've now got the Fortec put back together with the original tires back on, ready to run again. I'm just going to keep running these down until they, they blow apart. I did order some contact RC foams for doing speed runs, so those are on the way. And uh, when those come in, I, I very well might need that extra few millimeters. So that's where these come into place. This is 3654 if you want the, uh, the hex, hexes that give you two to three more millimeters of offset. You might need those with other rims because these rims have a high offset already and they're a wider 30 millimeter rear and a 26 millimeter front. And uh, I just wanted to show you after the uh, speed bump crash what damage there is. You know, I've, there's just a little bit of uh, scraping here on this front bumper and there's the yellow from the speed bump that hit here on this edge but really there's no damage it broke nothing no parts broken this thing is built tough tougher than the original Fortec. on the original Fortec 1.0 the rear hub carriers are really weak these ones are extremely uh well designed they they don't seem like they're going to break anytime soon so that's that's great